the problem that Gradio is solving is ultimately we want to build better machine learning models for interdisciplinary teams. Now, there's, I think, two aspects to that. One is if a model is bad, right? So if it's not robust, if it's going to fail, you want to detect that early and you want to like detect the failure points of the model immediately before it goes into production. And, and the, the kind of the second aspect is if the model is actually good, you want to build trust around that model within your interdisciplinary team. And these are complementary problems, of course. And the reason it has been, I think, challenging for to do this is because we expect machine learning scientists to do all, like to do all, too many things. <laughs> we expect them to train the models, but then also deploy the models often, especially in you know smaller teams, we, we expect them to deploy the models. And we expect them to build a database to collect incoming samples that are you know maybe causing the model to break, to put that detection framework there. And especially in interdisciplinary settings, we expect them to build like a front end or a demo as well around the model so that a wide user base can, can actually use the model. Th that is the problem that ultimately I think prevents a lot of models from being tested and you know identified as this is a problem early on. And so what, what ends up happening is that these models get, up, get end up getting deployed usually by somebody else who didn't train the model. And then by the time the models are detected, the problems are detected, it's too late. And, and that th this iterative cycle is way too slow. So that's what Gradio is trying to solve, to make that, okay, everything else that you got to do, deploy the model, collect samples, build a front end. Let's do that in Python, okay, with just a few lines of code. Let's abstract that away because it's usually the same kind of code. That's, okay, so that's one problem. Now, going to the second problem, but actually building trust around the model. One of the things that we've seen, and this is super interesting, is that when, so how do you actually build trust in a model? What, think about it yourself. Someone gave you an algorithm. How would you learn to trust it? In the machine learning academic community, one of the most common answers to that question is, let's build interpretive tools. So we've realized that just giving like a high level aggregate metric of accuracy, this model is 93% accurate, is not enough to build trust because people, when they see that number, they're naturally skeptical. So now what we started to do is we started to build interpret interpretation tools. Okay, but what ends up happening is that these interpretation tools don't necessarily correspond to how humans think about the problem. Okay, so they open up that black box, but not in usually in the most natural ways. And people can sometimes be as skeptical of the interpretations as they are, as they are of the, the original kind of aggregate metric. So one thing that we've seen that works really well, actually, is letting the domain expert use their kind of domain knowledge to adversarially test the model. So they're like, okay, so I have this like echocardi, uh, just to give a particular example that, that we recently uh, saw. So this, uh, there's someone that deployed a model that looks at ultrasound images of the heart and they deployed it to a doctor and the doctor, okay, yeah, cool. This is making the right prediction. It's saying that there's a pacemaker in the heart and so on. What they did was they were using Gradio, which allows them to edit the input and use their domain knowledge to quickly manipulate the different things about the input. So they used the domain knowledge to actually edit out the pacemaker in the heart. And they saw the model's prediction change in real time. They're like, oh, from pacemaker to no pacemaker and from various things. And they tried multiple things like that. And by the end of it, they were like, okay, this actually works. I've tested it on things that I think should be hard for the model. And it agrees with my intuition. And when that happened, actually everyone in the room, even the machine learning researchers, we breathed a sigh of relief too, because it's one thing <laughs> to know your model works in the abstract, but when it's actually tested, it, it still continues to work. So I think one big thing that, that we need to start thinking about is how do we build trust in these models? I think a big solution to that is getting it in the hands of the people who want to use it as quickly as possible. Not having to go through these long cycles where you hand off the model to somebody else who deploys it, who sets up all this stuff. Let's just quickly get the model in the hands. If it's not working, let's iterate, let's improve it so that we're actually optimizing for what we ultimately care about, which is real world usage and, and not test accuracy basically. So I think one thing that we've uh, been excited about is this thing that we released called Gradio Hub. And what that is, it's a place for, mostly academics are using it as a place to release not just your papers, not just your code, but actually an interface, a demo for your model. And we think this is really important again in the inter interdisciplinary space because most of the time the users of these models are not going to be com you know, computer scientists, uh, let alone machine learning scientists. Oftentimes they are, for example, medical folks or other kind of domain experts, business users and so on. And so I think it's really important to be able to actually let your models be, if, if you really, you know, I think we've, we've probably all had this experience. We saw a cool paper, we want to implement it. The code is available, but it's a mess. <laughs> it's very hard to use. And I think hopefully, Jakob, with your notebooks, that's, that, that's going to that's gonna be, be better going forward. But getting a model to actually work 
even if when you have the code available, is not easy. <laughs> and so I think being able to provide these user interfaces where anyone can immediately try out how a model is doing on their data set, I, th I think it's actually quite valuable. And we've seen it now, a lot of academics from the last New Europe's conference actually uploaded inter you know, demos and interfaces for their models, not just the code. So I think that's making, lowering the barrier to using these models even more, I think is going to be really important. What we've done, I think is the first step, but there's really a lot more that needs to be done because what we've done is allowed someone to try out like individual samples, individual data points on a particular model. But I think it would be super valuable for the purpose of reproducibility and for the purpose of accessibility. If we could, you know, easily compare state, you know, a bunch of state-of-the-art models on this entire data set from all over the different domains. And I think Hugging Face, for example, is doing a great job with that, with, with the NLP models and now starting to look at other, I think, domains as well. But I think we need more of that where any published model, any published, you know, code becomes immediately accessible and can be, you know, plugged in as a baseline. You know, I want to use this, I want to compare this baseline with this other baseline with my own model and see what's doing well.